Hello everyone, welcome to the uh, uh, 12th lecture on uh, introduction to GIS and in this particular one we are going to discuss a technique which is called interpolation. Since we go for uh, spatial data therefore it is also called spatial interpolation techniques. There are variety of uh, 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 interpolation techniques are available depending on your uh, requirements. Uh, but uh, there are few things which I would like to mention here first uh, that generally uh, the interpolation is done from disc using discrete data to make them as continuous. So, from vector to raster uh, you go for interpolation. So, in uh, generally the input data can either be a point data or even line data. Line data you know that line is made from several nodes and these nodes can be treated as point. So, sometimes you might be having input as contours. So, these contours can be converted into points uh, using the tools available in your GIS software and then point to surface that is going from discrete to uh, continuous. Another important thing uh, is here is uh, uh, basically uh, why interpolation is required. This is uh, because uh, uh, your point representation or contour representation as mentioned is a dic discrete representation. So, say think uh, that between uh, two contours you do not have any information, there is a gap in the information. So, suppose this is 100 meter contour, this is 200 meter contour. Now, we do not have any information between these two contours, same, same with the point data and therefore, we call them as discrete that between two points we do not have any information about the uh, what if, uh, if we consider as a height then we do not have the height of these uh, locations where no observations are available. We do not have any height of information between two contour lines. So, if we want to uh, create a, a surface uh, that will represent the terrain in case of elevation then we go for interpolation. Now, there is a, a assumption a, or a belief a, which one has to uh, have before we go for interpolation that a, once the information no information is there then uh, whatever the mathematical way we can drive information that has to be assumed that it is going to be accurate. For example, if I uh, take a, a simple example here that uh, I say this is 100 meter and this is uh, 200 meter height and I want to know the height of this point and uh, about this. So, a very simple way of uh, thinking that uh, we, we can take as a uh, linearly we can connect this one and say that the height of this point if it is in the center may be 150. So, this way this is the called linear method of interpolation. But uh, this is in uh, 2D, we need to have in 3D that means we are going to create a surface. So, all these details we will see slowly, slowly what are different methods, what are the advantages and disadvantages with different methods and also we will try to think that which interpolation will suit to my data set that can also be uh, uh, thought on here. So, uh, what is basically a spatial interpolation as, as uh, that it turns raw data or your discrete data into uh, continuous data or useful information. So, it, it adds the greater informative content and value because it is very difficult to uh, uh, assume a terrain uh, using just point data or contours data. But if you are having a surface representing the same area uh, then terrain can be understood very well. And the best example of uh, this, uh, these kind of terrain surfaces are nowadays which we use digital elevation models. Many of them have been derived from satellite data or uh, either through the interpolations using contour data and point heights. Uh, once we convert a discrete into a continuous or point into surface, then it can also reveal the patterns it can reveal the trends and also anomalies uh, maybe higher locations maybe lower locations and so on and so forth it is not necessary 
that all, only input will be the elevation values. It can be any value, suppose somebody is working for groundwater, so it can be the pH value, it can be groundwater quality value, cations, ions and uh, you know total dissolved solids, all kinds of values can be used. So, for subsurface conditions interpolations can be done if the data is available, for surface conditions also uh, the interpolations can be done. It provides a check on human intuition. So, at least uh, based on certain mathematical concepts, uh, it will predict a value for a unknown location, uh, uh, for a, a location for which you do not have any information and uh, then try to help uh, uh, in the situations where I might de uh, deceive. So, where we cannot think, but uh, mathematical surfaces can be drawn which will give you a, a near true representation of a value of a phenomena, maybe elevation, maybe other quant qualities. Now, uh, if we go to the definition of a special interpolation, which is the procedure of estimation, uh, estimating the value of properties, properties can be elevation or chemical properties, maybe groundwater level or water table and other things at a unsampled sites for which we do not have any observation or data within the area covered by existing observations. So, when we cover the area, if you are having point for area and it is uh, distributed, so beyond, uh, beyond observations then we call as the extrapolation, but uh, uh, within the observations it is called interpolation. So, if you are having data say like this and uh, you do the interpolation for this area, uh, then this part it we will call as interpolation, in this part we will call as extrapolation, because beyond this point, these points on the right side we do not have any observations. So, uh, the tools uh, which are available in GIS uh, can be used uh, when you go for uh, point using point data to create surface and uh, these interpolation extrapolation are done simultaneously. Interpolation predicts values uh, for cell in a raster from a limited number of sample data points. And there, uh, there is the advantage also uh, with the interpolation that you might be having say 100 observations for an area. Now, you can create a surface which will represent and give you lot of information which is otherwise very difficult to extract or near impossible to extract just using the point data. And it can be uh, used to predict unknown values for any geographic point and uh, data such as elevation, rainfall, chemical concentrations, noise level and uh, so on. And uh, in almost all cases the attribute must be interval or ratio. Since we have discussed different types of attributes, so remember that like uh, for uh, cyclic data interpolation cannot be done, for counts and amounts interpolation cannot be done and for nominal data interpolation cannot be done. So, you need to have either interval data or ratio data where you can do the interpolation. Uh, the example is shown here that uh, the input is point data and their values are uh, written here. Say assume these are the elevation values. So, when, when we decide the size of the grid uh, 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 or the surface which we are going uh, which we are intended, uh, then uh, in this one the original values for each cell are intact here. So, when we 20 and 24 wherever it is falling the same values are in the interpolated cells, but remaining values have been predicted here. So, this we may consider an uh, sort of exact interpolation, we will see uh, different uh, types of interpolation techniques. So, converting from uh, discrete data here to a continuous surface uh, as raster. Uh, through the interpolation. Also, he has shown here that uh, now uh, you are having other points, a uh, lot of points are there, they all they will have a values in your attribute table and you choose a particular field uh, where the values are there for which you want to create a surface and then uh, whatever the method you will choose accordingly a surface will be created. Here it is shown uh, just uh, in a continuous fashion and uh, some uh, colors have been given which are representing a range of say if these are elevation values, so range of elevation values are represented through colors. And if it would have been elevation model, we can call them 
as a relief map. So, interpolation can be thought as a re reverse of the process used to select few points from a DM which accurately represent the surface. The purpose here uh, the rational behind interpolation is that the where we do not have observations we want to know uh, or we want to predict that value and therefore, we go for interpolation and this, this concept is based on the Tobler's law of geography which says that uh, again the neighborhood uh, rule is coming here that the uh, point unknown point uh, for which you want to have the value uh, whichever it, uh, the uh, closest observation will have the maximum influence on this one. Uh, if, I, uh, if I take example here then uh, uh, the prediction for the say this value at this location will have maximum influence from this value rather than from this one. And if it would have been in middle then both will have the same influence. So, this is based on the concept of Tobler's law of geography and now interpolation uh, may, uh, may be used in GIS to calculate some property of the surface at a given point may be elevation, may be ground water or water table or water quality to provide contours for displaying data graphically and it is frequently used uh, uh, in the spatial decision making process and uh, such as in terrain analysis, hydrology, mineral prospecting, hydrocarbon exploration etc. Because when you use the point data create a surface from point data say point data is elevation data you have created a surface which we will call as digital elevation model. Now, there are various derivatives of uh, digital LE mod models can come like slope, aspect and uh, maybe gradient map, maybe uh, using surface hydrologic modeling in GIS you can create drainage network, you can create water set boundary, you can create the sediment power index, uh, erosion index and many many things and this is what is that a terrain analysis you can perform once a data is in the surface form or in raster. You can also use in hydrology or in groundwater hydrology and uh, or you can drive various uh, 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 outputs which are useful for hydrology. Also you can have cut and fill analysis, you can have the dam simulation, reservoir simulation and uh, so, so many things can be used once the data is in the raster form or in a surface form uh, from drive through interpolation from point data. Now, as we know that uh, uh, this uh, raster surfaces for each cell you are having a value and uh, these are the equal uh, size uh, cells you are having and uh, as uh, you know that uh, uh, for different uh, situations because the terrain conditions might be different for Himalayan terrain the conditions are different. So, the interpolation techniques might be also different for the point data for off endogenetic plane again interpolation might be different. So, that is also very much uh, before we go for interpolation we must understand that phenomena one and local information if available for that area that would definitely help us to choose a right uh, interpolation technique. Then in grid representation as uh, because uh, we are representing as a raster and that too in a form of grid rather than an image. So, you will have your x y locations and z value that is your single attribute in raster and that z value can be your elevation value or other concentration value, depth value, height value etcetera. And these fun uh, functional surfaces are continuous because raster is continuous not discrete. Now, these functional surfaces can be used to represent uh, your terrestrial surfaces, terrain which depicts the surface terrain conditions. We can also use uh, in a statistics or mathematical representation. So, we call as statistical surfaces uh, that describes the demography, mathematical surfaces based on the arithmetic expressions and this surface representation in simplest form is done by storing x, y and z value in the defined location of a sample. You can 
later on you can also create uh, contour lines or iso lines, but it is a sort of backward process because again from going for continuous to discrete, but sometimes we have to do it because uh, many people uh, are very good to understand contour data rather than surface. So, they would prefer uh, the contour. So, it is very easy to create contours at desired levels uh, using a surface uh, very easily in uh, any standard GIS softwares. And uh, uh, as you know that the contours typically join uh, the equal value or equal height if these are uh, topographic contours. And uh, in case of contour lines representing elevation, it is a line uh, drawn on a map that connects uh, points of equal elevation above the datum uh, that we know. Uh, in tin also, uh, they, uh, tin is sometimes also considered as a interpolation where because the point uh, input is there and then you create uh, uh, triangles. So, there you know uh, different way of uh, uh, representing the surface which uh, tin we since we have discussed. So, we move here from here. Uh, grid uh, uh, the your surface generally that like digital elevation model are in form of grid and uh, we know that each cell will represent a value. Uh, some examples are here that uh, in a discrete form your point data is here uh, we can also represent in contours we can also represent the same uh, point data uh, in form of tints and uh, the same uh, point data can also be used through interpolation to create surface raster grids. At this point we have already discussed that why interpolate because we do not have information where everywhere which where we want all the time and therefore interpolation. So, visiting every location in a study area to measure the height magnitude or concentration of a phenomena is usually difficult or expensive and uh, instead strategically dispersed sample input points locations can be selected and a predicted value can be assigned to all locations. And input points can be either randomly or regularly spaced points containing heights, concentration or magnitude measurements. It is not necessary that the input points should be distributed uniformly, not at all. Wherever the observations are available, using those points surface uh, through interpolations can be created. Uh, as I said that the a major assumption or belief is that it may uh, interpolation makes a viable option that specially distributed objects are specially correlated. In other words, things that are close together tend to have similar characteristics. This is a Tobler's law of geography. And uh, for instance, if we say that if it is raining on one side of the street, one can predict with a high level of confidence that it is raining on the other side of the street. And uh, one would be less certain if it were raining across town or less confident still about the street, the weather in the next country. Because closer the point, higher would be the confidence level and it is easier to predict. Uh, with high level of confidence rather than a, a point which is very far and we do not know and it is it becomes very difficult to predict. So, the same concept has been employed into uh, interpolation and the same logic or analogy is that it is easy to see that the values of points close to sample points are more likely to similar than those are the farther apart and this is basically the basis of interpolation. A typical use of inter, a point interpolation is to create a surface from discrete data to a continuous surface. There are methods, various methods are available for interpolation which we will go in a sort of generic form then individual uh, interpolation techniques which have been implemented especially in GIS softwares. So, we will also see. First one is the global versus local. Another is uh, exact versus approximate and uh, uh, stochastic versus deterministic and then abrupt versus smooth. Uh, global let's take a uh, global versus local that global interpolators determine a single function which is mapped across the whole region. And uh, for example, a trend surfaces where a, a, a you know the 
uh, the function has been calculated and determined and that function is applied throughout the uh, data sets. And uh, that uh, example is trend surfaces and local interpolators apply an algorithm repeated to a small portion of the total set of points and uh, example is inverse distance uh, weighted method. And this is uh, the uh, this method has been implemented this interpolation techniques into the standard GIS softwares. So, that can be also used here. Now, exact versus ap 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 approximate that exact interpolators honor the input data points which does not mean that the surface is exact. That means that uh, the input value when a surface is being created it tries to have that value intact as far as possible, but not all the time it would have the same value. Approximate interpolators allow for uncertainty in the input data points which allows for a smoothening. So, when we go for approximate interpolators that means we are going more towards nonlinear uh, interpolator and when we go for nonlinear interpolation techniques then we uh, the original values are not kept in the raster data and uh, there a lot of variations might be there, but the, the surface which it will create and uh, through this type of interpolation is going to be quite smooth. But if we go for exact interpolator then the surface it is going to create is not going to be this smooth. So, it depends on the phenomena. If we know that I am going to interpolate uh, for a terrain like indo plane, we know it is a very smooth terrain then uh, the approximate interpolators are more appro would be more appropriate than exact one. But when we when we do not say for example, I am going to uh, do the interpolation for a terrain like Himalayan terrain which is highly rugged and therefore, the smooth interpolators or approximate interpolators are not suitable then I would prefer exact interpolator and that is why it has been mentioned that uh, we must know uh, the phenomena which phenomena I am going to use which type of data is going to come for interpolation. If it is elevation data then what is the terrain condition. If prior information is there then it will allow us to choose appropriate interpolation technique. The fourth one is stochastic versus deterministic. In a stochastic methods which incorporates the concept of randomness similar to a linear regression model or a surface of best fit. Whereas, in deterministic method do not use probability theory. So, these, uh, uh, these types of uh, you know generic form of interpolators are there of about 8 types. Now, in case of abrupt versus smooth like uh, sometimes in nature there might be some ten certain barriers and we, you want to keep the information about those barriers, the influence in the surface while creating a surface from point data. And those barriers can also be used in the interpolation and that means you would prefer the abrupt uh, interpolators rather than a smooth interpolators. And example here in this case suppose I am working for groundwater. I know there are say some uh, dikes or say quartz reefs are there and quartz reefs are uh, you know will serve as a barrier which will uh, not allow uh, flow of water from one end to across across these quarry reefs and the water might not flow smoothly and therefore these uh, these quarry reefs will serve as barriers and if i if i ignore them and create a surface uh, about the water table it is going to be the smooth surface which is uh, which is going to be inaccurate representation of a true water table or water surface and therefore i need to incorporate and uh, such barriers while creating the uh, the surface which should be more close to the real thing. And that is why uh, these abrupt uh, uh, inputs are allowed in uh, different interpolation techniques and we will discuss little later all this. That abrupt interpolators allows for barriers for example, faults, fronts, dikes, uh, reefs etcetera, a smooth interpolators produce a smooth surface. So, depending on your requirement, depending on the phenomena, depending on the terrain conditions one would choose uh, you know the interpolation. Now, these uh, same interpolation techniques can be divided in two 
a different way in two different categories. One is uh, based on the mathematical functions, one is the linear interpolations uh, where initially earlier I gave the example, uh, it is uh, easy to predict and therefore, some for certain phenomena linear interpolation works very well or then you can go for non-linear interpolation. Now, in linear interpolation uh, as a value for this can be predicted because this uh, unknown and uh, this location and uh, the unknown value is more close to the 130 than 140. So, it will have more influence here and uh, it is very easy uh, to predict that value. So, uh, a linear prediction is much easier and surface uh, changes in a linear fashion and uh, uh, can be simple mathematical functions. Uh, now, point based interpolations because in most of these interpolation tools which are available in GIS, the input is maximum time is point data. And uh, if it is only point data and you are having say contour data and you want to create a surface, no problem. Uh, you can convert from line to point and then point can go for interpolation. So, that is why it is also called point based interpolations which use for the data which can be collected at point locations and uh, for example, if I am going for uh, rainfall or other phenomena related with weather, then weather readings may be heights, spot heights, may be soil, may be ground water levels or water quality and other things. Let us take a one example of exact method for point based interpolation which is also known as the Thyssen polygon. When we did not have these GIS tools in hydrology lot of people used to have the input as a rain for rainfall surfaces they used to go for Thyssen polygon. So, what it is done that uh, around these uh, observation points the polygons are created and uh, there the perpendicular the distance perpendicular distance is uh, you know kept like this and then lines are drawn and then these polygons are created. So, this is a proximal uh, which is a Thyssen polygon is also called local exact abrupt deterministic all four things are there and uh, the data uh, can be input data or ratio data. Uh, this kind of uh, non-linear interpolations which based on the tabular's law of geography points close together in space are more likely to have uh, similar values than points further apart and uh, also distant bitted interpolator example is IDW uh, as the closer the uh, distance to the observation already available data it will have more influence the further it will have less influence. And when this is the because is inverse relation is used that is why it is called inverse distance weighted method. Uh, so, in the, this IDW interpolators estimate cell values by averaging or the of your uh, cell values of your raster or surface by averaging the values of sample data points in a neighborhood of each processing cell. Now, if there are several observations are available around for a unknown uh, uh, area for a known value for a location given location then uh, uh, the distances will be measured and uh, the point which will have observation which will have the closest distance will have more influence more weight while determining the cell value for a location and uh, closer the point is to, to the center of the cell being estimated the more influence or weight it has in the averaging process. Recall the resampling techniques in georeferencing it is, the, it is almost the same concept and that is why also I mentioned there that uh, sometimes interpolation uh, these resampling techniques people also put them as under the interpolation category, but they are not really meant for re interpolations. Uh, from point to surface, they are just to find out the pixel value uh, for or a cell value uh, uh, for uh, um, after uh, you know once the registration and polynomial or co uh, transformation function is found. So, the purpose there is different, but the concept wise it is uh, same thing here. Now, IDW interpolator assumes that the variable being mapped decreases in influence with distance from its sample location very uh, logical here and uh, here 
for example. Now, uh, another advantage which we, we can have either we can fix the size of this uh, circle, the search radius we call as search radius or we can fix number of points uh, which will be used as input to determine the value for this center uh, point. So, it is uh, you know for example, when interpolating a surface of a pollution, uh, we know that the more the distance location will have less influence of pollution. Uh, same here the example is shown that it uh, the point for where the question mark is shown here, it will have the maximum influence of point A and uh, uh, the to uh, compared uh, comparatively it will have less influence from point C but point D will have the least influence. So, depending on the distance it is a inverse relation. So, farther distance least the influence it will have. So, first distance for from each neighboring point is measured and then number of points to include in the search can be selected. If when we go for interpolation which I will show certain uh, through uh, you know uh, options which are available in uh, one particular software there we can restrict either using a search radius or number of points. So, this is that point the number of points to include in each search can be selected and then distance is calculated according to the formula. An example is here uh, uh, like in ArcGIS software when I go for interpolation here you can see that the point locations are there and uh, uh, the value uh, which I am going to use to do the interpolation is the pH value, the input map is soil and uh, uh, these details we will see little later and uh, the search radius is chosen is variable whereas, number of points we have fixed 12. So, if you if you fixed it here then uh, you need not to do anything here and then uh, what uh, you can decide at this stage what is going to be the spatial resolution of your output grid. So, that also you can decide and where you want to store and uh, once you choose uh, say you choose these things go for uh, interpolation then a surface will be created. Now, let us see that what is the meaning of power here and uh, that power controls the significance of known points on the interpolator values based on their distance from the output. That means, the high power high higher power means emphasis is placed on the nearest point and the resulting surface will have more detail, but less smoothing. So, depending on your requirements sometimes when we do not know and the best thing is to look for some help first understand and then create surface rather than just choosing the default value and created a surface and then you do not know uh, what kind of accuracy it is carrying. And the same is uh, just reverse of high power low power low power value if you give then more influence on the points that are further away resulting in a smoother surface. So, depending on what phenomena here it is pH and uh, we can assume that uh, it is uh, uh, it is uh, you know power 2 will have a, a quite good influence and uh, we do not we are not looking for a very smooth surface and then we can uh, go for interpolation. So, the power 2 is most common use with IDW and that is why it is kept in default. And similarly, the search radius as I have all mentioned that you can fix the size of the search radius or you can keep as variable and then fix the number of points and the, then interpolation is done. And similarly, uh, the barriers this is the point which I wanted to bring here use the barrier polyline. So, whenever you go for use the barriers that means, you are not going for a smooth interpolator, interpolators you are going for abrupt interpolator because your requirements because the terrain or phenomena on which you are working is having those uh, uh, issues. So, then the, this uh, barrier information has to come in form of a polyline a line theme has to be added and then you can go uh, choose this option and then a near real surface will be created though it might be abrupt. So, as we can see that uh, uh, polyline is a basically is a barrier is may be fault line may be quartz reef may be a dike and so on and so forth and sometimes even 
uh, in uh, surface water flow we can use a river as a barrier as well. So, polyline data sets used to break line that limits the search for the input sample points and polyline can represent a cliff, ridge or some other interruptions in a landscape. Only those input sample points on the same side of the barrier as current processing will be considered. See the surface has been created which has been which is shown here as in a 3D. Without barriers it is quite a smooth, but when I will use the barrier as giving as a input uh, one of the additional input as a polyline then a abrupt surface is created. This uh, it depending on the phenomenon. If we are having information, we must bring that information during interpolation. So, you create the surface which is more close to the reality. So, barriers which reflects the presence of fault lines, cliffs, streams and other features that create linear discontinuity in surfaces and also control how surfaces are generated. Not for all interpolation techniques, barriers are supported. Only in case of IDW and creating supports the barriers. This is about the, uh, the search radius. So, a search you can have either maximum number of points. So, once say uh, if you have decided 12 number of points, then it will search only 12 number points in the neighborhood all around and then use those points measure their distance and accordingly the influence and then value is determined. Whereas, in case of fixed radius, whatever the number of points which will fall as per the size of the radius, it will use those points again measure the distance and calculate the value. So, both options are available. Uh, here uh, numbers uh, you when you fix the numbers it is fine. Now, problem might come at the edges beyond which you do not have. So, if I am uh, calculating a value for uh, the boundary line areas there might be some problems. So, maybe interpolation extrapolation might be done in those cases. So, this uh, I have already explained to you about maximum number or uh, number fixing or either fixed radius and so on. Now, here uh, this is another uh, interpolation technique which is SP line and in this technique uh, we can have different variants of SP line. So, like in default you might be getting regularized or tension. When you go for regularized method it creates a smooth surface, gradually changing surface with values that might lie outside the sample data range. So, that means whenever you go for any smooth interpolators, you have to prepare mentally that the values are not going to be exact values. Values may go beyond your observational ranges because the surface you have asked is a smoother surface. When you uh, use the different again uh, instead of regularize if you go for tension then tension controls the stiffness of the surface according to the character of a model phenomena and it creates less smooth surface as compared to the regularized one with values more closely constrained and uh, by the sample data. Range. So, you will have near real value near real values, but not as, sur as a smooth surface and in case of regularized. Now, also SP line came and uh, the concept of SP line came uh, of course, from mathematics, but it is called the French curves and a lot of uh, uh, you know architect and other people used to have the curves for drawings and these were nothing for the smooth uh, uh, lines they were creating. So, SP line method estimates values using a mathematical function that minimizes overall surface curvature resulting in a smooth surface that passes exactly through the input points. And these used to be uh, these uh, French curves of made from acrylics and people wherever the observations are there they used to fit these French curves and then draw the lines. Now, mathematical ways of doing in GIS or all available. So, we go for SP line interpolator very easily and there are different uh, options are there uh, which can be used in your GIS software. As I have said that there are variant uh, vari variant of SP line method two major one is the linear SP line 
interpolators and quadratic sp line and then a third one is the cubic sp line interpolators. The mathematics behind is also given here. Why I am showing uh, this uh, particular slide? The purpose here is whenever you go and start using GIS using a particular software, in the beginning of this uh, series of these lectures, I have said that one should resort to the help. And uh, sometimes online or offline helps of the software are very, very helpful. So, whenever suppose you are going for interpolations, some options are being displayed, you do not understand what is the meaning of these options. Then before go and create a surface, check for the help and uh, very detailed helps with the standard GIS softwares are always available, maybe on online or offline. And uh, online is always better because it is updated all the time. So, if you are having access to net, you can go for online help and read before you choose the option for interpolation, creating a surface. And that is why, you know, which one to choose whether in default it might be linear spline is coming. Now, a question, uh, when, when you go and uh, scroll down, you would find that two more methods are there. Which are those two methods? What are the variations? What are the uh, mathematics behind these? that you can check very well through online uh, resources. Now, uh, SP line methods uh, again here is regularized, again uh, he, then you have the tension one uh, and uh, 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 those other options are already there. So, you know you can have the weight and uh, other things, number of points uh, maybe in the default you may get 12, it, you can choose as per and the smoothness you want in your data. There is no basically uh, fixed number or guidelines here, but uh, generally uh, the, the default values are kept which are commonly used values. Now, the uh, last type of this interpolation techniques which is very, very popular and uh, have been implemented into standard GIS softwares is Kriging method. And uh, Kriging is a group of geostatistical techniques to interpolate the values of a random field may be elevation z, uh, uh, z value of the landscape as a function of geographic location at an unobserved location from observations of its values by nearby locations. And the theory behind this uh, Kriging interpolation that uh, interpolation and extrapolation by Kriging was developed by a French mathematician uh, whose name was Georges Mathron on based on the master thesis of Daniel Craig. And uh, so, and the, his name was carried and then Kriging method was developed. Kriging is stochastic sometime, uh, something that is random, exact, smooth or abrupt, global or local. And uh, as you can see here, uh, in a two, uh, 2D or in a line linear fashion it has been shown uh, that uh, these blue boxes are showing the observations and uh, these uh, Nine, uh, you know the interpolated surface through Kriging is, uh, is is shown in the red line, and this is 95 percent confidence intervals on the both sides of your uh, interpolated surface. So the advantage with Kriging method that you can also estimate errors uh, after the interpolation. You get the estimation of errors, whereas with other methods, that kind of estimation is not available. So, Kriging is found to be one of the best uh, uh, interpolation techniques, but again it depends on the phenomena and local or local conditions, terrain conditions. Uh, natural data are difficult to model using smooth functions because normally random fluctuations and measurement error combine to cause irregularities in the sample value. What does it mean basically that the natural data like uh, uh, elevation points for a Himalaya is different than Indo-Gangetic plane and therefore, one has to be careful while choosing a interpolation technique. Kriging was developed to model those stochastic uh, concept. It is based on the concept of a regionalized uh, variable that has three components. One is the your data and uh, then it is having structural, spatially correlated and random noise. As I have said, the errors measurements are possible or error estimations are available 
uh, with the Kriging. We see in this XY plot what we find uh, that these uh, the blue dots are the showing the observations and then you are having a, a best fit line here which is in shown in red then you, you are getting a green line which is uh, uh, connecting trying, trying to connect all these points and these kinks in along the green lines are showing your random noise or errors. So, error estimations is also possible using Kriging. And now, uh, there are uh, regionalized variable that is components of a Kriging. We can uh, in, the, in the previous view graph, we can segment it. So, we can see that this is structural component which is the straight line fit and then we can have a spatially correlated component which is going through all your uh, data, uh, input data which is very, very, very uh, varying with the distance and then the third one is the random, random noise component which is non-fitted data. So, this extra information which comes with Kriging is not available with other interpolation techniques. Kriging is implemented using a semi variogram and there are many different varieties or variants of Kriging are also available and uh, again this becomes sometimes difficult which ones to choose. So, in your software various soft various options might be available one has to be very careful and uh, before you go and press ok button uh, the options which are available are you going are you selecting the right one or not because it ultimately the a computer will create a surface, but that surface has to be more realistic re, near to reality than just simply a surface and therefore, understanding the options variants of different uh, techniques uh, is very much required. In, a, in a, uh, softwares like in ArcGIS and uh, these are the options which are available same the example which I was uh, showing here z value you can have here a pH value or some other value then you can choose the method either ordinary triggering or universal triggering semi variogram model you can choose various models and then search radius you can have variable or a number of points or fixed and uh, always you can control the resolution of your grid which you are going to create and if you are having some uh, uh, variance of predictions already available that too you can use here and uh, can create that one. Uh, here is the example that the semi variogram is based on modeling and uh, the square differences in the z value as a function of the distance between all the known points which is uh, shown here as well. One of the very useful output from a Kriging analysis is a uncertainty surface that can be generated, we can answer the questions how good are the predictions. That means basically error estimations which is not possible with other estimate, other interpolation techniques and one can create an ordinary Krieg map and a map showing the standard error of prediction uh, and then we can compare uh, with the models like 10 and others one. Uh, some examples are here using the same input creating the surf different surfaces using different interpolation techniques. First example is IDW, then SP line and Kriging. See the input data is same and uh, many options are kept same, but still the output surfaces are uh, very, very different here. And uh, same if we go for a 2D representation or trying to understand then this IDW is coming as a green surface, your SP line is coming as a blue, your observations are shown as blue dots and then Crick surface is that uh, blue one it is coming here. So, all different interpolation techniques are going to create different surfaces as you can see. Now, problems with the interpolations because whenever you interpolate from point data to a surface a question can be asked how accurate this representation is. So, this accuracy issue will always come and here it becomes very difficult to answer except if you are having Kriging uh, if you have done Kriging then you can uh, provide that kind of values, but if you have used some other interpolators probably you do not have the exact answer. So, accuracy issue will always be there. There are certain ways of uh, choosing appropriate one and avoiding uh, or uh, 
uh, avoiding uh, large errors in your interpolations and uh, this question of accuracy may be handled quite easily. Now, a visual uh, representation uh, is very much there. So, which surface you, you it looks more uh, close to the, uh, the real one that is also has to be seen and uh, edge affects or lack of data at the margins. After like in this example also that here uh, the data where uh, to the uh, you know area of interest is available fine, but when we go beyond this one then we do not have the data. So, the along the margins along the borders this issue uh, will remain there in case of interpolation because then extrapolation is done and extrapolation may not be uh, as accurate as interpolation. So, these issues are always associated with this interpolation. Thank you very much.